Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 20th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today took a closer look at web server error logs and now we collect them as part of our 404 project as the name implies we're looking for 404 errors essentially errors where people are looking for a certain page on your server that doesn't exist. What we find often is that uh, these are also attempts to find various vulnerabilities on your site for example software that you may have installed. Now there are of course your top hits like WordPress and the like. Xavier looked a little bit at the less common logs and what he found is a lot of attempts to find configuration files. Configuration files of course are always interesting because they may contain things like passwords and other configuration parameters that are interesting for the attacker. They also may tell the attacker more about how a certain piece of software is installed, what version it's running and whether or not it is vulnerable. If you're interested in participating in the 404 project, pretty easy to do so. You just have to submit essentially your 404 error logs via a little script. I'm also about done integrating this in our Raspberry Pi honeypot. So if you're waiting till next week, you probably can submit logs like this using this Raspberry Pi setup. And Apple today again updated everything, which means iOS, Mac OS, Safari for older versions of OS X, also Watch OS, TV OS, iTunes for Apple and for Windows. So really every piece of software that you're likely running from Apple received an update. Now, probably the highest profile bug that's being addressed with this update across these different devices and operating systems is a vulnerability in the Broadcom Wi-Fi chipset. There is a paper that will be released in the next couple of days that will outline some vulnerabilities in this particular chipset that can lead to code execution via corrupt Wi-Fi signals. Android has already addressed this in a recent update. So Apple is essentially just releasing these updates now before the paper will be published. In addition to this Wi-Fi vulnerability, there are a large number of other vulnerabilities that are being addressed in this update. For example, WebKit again receives a significant update and a large number of vulnerabilities are being patched again across uh, these different operating systems. Now you'll probably see a lot of news releases regarding this Wi-Fi vulnerability if you haven't already seen that and a little bit of hype around that too. It's certainly a very serious vulnerability. There have been other vulnerabilities like it in the past. They haven't really been exploited a lot, but I would definitely recommend over the weekend or so if you have an hour, apply the update and get it over with. And Trend Micro is reporting that they're seeing some exploit attempts against the recent Samba Cry vulnerability. Samba Cry again is CVE 2017-7494. This particular vulnerability allows code execution on a server if the attacker is first able to upload a file to the server. So a vulnerable server would offer some kind of public directory that an attacker can use to upload a file to and then the content of the file can be executed. What Trend Micro saw so far is really nothing too special. They saw some uh, cryptocurrency miners being deployed that way. That's of course what we have seen a lot uh, done uh, with uh, these uh, simple uh, Linux server vulnerabilities. As far as defense goes, best thing is to just keep your systems patched. If you can't do that, of course, don't allow SMB access remotely or don't allow unauthenticated file uploads. And Google is apparently implementing some of the lessons learned from the recent attack that did trick users into assigning OAuth tokens to a malicious application that claimed to be Google Documents. 
First of all, Google will make it now a little bit more difficult to actually register as a developer and then applications will be labeled as unverified initially. So the user will see a prominent warning banner that the application is not verified, which hopefully will make the user think twice before they assign privileges to this application. Well, and that's it for today. And just as a reminder, this weekend, of course, Sans Fire starts in Washington, D.C., our biggest conference and lots of Internet Storm Center content uh, there. We have our handlers uh, that will be speaking. We have our usual panel on Monday evening. Also, we'll be giving away a number of Raspberry Pis uh, during the week for anybody who's interested in running one of our sensors. Well, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.